Okay, students, so we have come across the stage where we will now take up this solid matter. So, till now what we have taken is gases. So, gases are one extreme which is very low density molecules while solid is something which is the opposite that is very high density. Then we will shortly discuss this solid exceptionally that is the crystals and then we will move towards the liquids which is a in between solid and gases. So, today's lecture we will start with the Einstein type of crystal model. So, the current particular model which we will start is the monoatomic crystals and the particular lecture we will devote it in discussing the Einstein model. So, what are we going to do? We are going to see for uh, the monoatomic crystals what are the assumptions involved? What are those assumptions which we use to derive the thermodynamic properties which is different than that of gases or liquids? So, we come to the Einstein model and later on we will also see the Debye model. So, this particular lecture will focus on Einstein model and we will take a problem which is resembling Einstein model related to adsorption isotherm. So, uh, we know crystals means which are solids. So, solids means it will be very dense systems. Till date what you are doing is we are talking about uh, low density fluids and we are correlating them with virial equation of state and we have also seen how we can obtain the uh, second virial coefficient, third virial coefficient likewise. And then how to use this virial equation of state and the equations and the coefficients to obtain thermodynamic properties. Similarly, this case is a bit different, they are dense systems, all the atoms are in their lattice sites. So, atoms are in their lattice sites, atoms in lattice sites because it is crystalline in nature. So, there is a very small separation between the atoms which are in the lattice sites. So, it means all the atoms will have strong interaction with its neighboring atoms. So, there is small separation. So, it is expected that the motions of the atom are just small vibration. So, if there are some more you have this type of system, these are atoms. So, it will be just small vibration across its equilibrium position, okay, because all of the other atoms are fixed in their lattice sites and the distance between the two atoms is very small. So, the small vibration around the equilibrium position actually is what we will analyze. So, it means thus we have separated out two aspects. See in the gas what we need to do, we need to learn both how they are interacting potential as well as their positions. Here at least the problem of position is easy because we know it will not move much, it will not have a translational part of motion, okay. it will only have a vibrational part of motion. So, problems of the location of the atoms and thermodynamic properties of the crystals are thus decoupled which is not possible in case of gases or maybe in liquid systems is much more complicated because gases anyway we are able to write interatomic potential between the molecules. But in the case of liquid we need to find a distribution how the molecules are distributed. So, you need to have some function and distribution function. So, we need to know average type of spatial arrangement of let us say of a central molecule and around its sphere what are the expected molecules. So, that is unknown. So, you need a position for also for those and these properties we require in liquid system to find out the thermodynamic property calculation. So, it is bit easy for solid system as compared to liquid or gaseous matter. So, for deriving the Einstein model, I will call this Einstein based crystal. Those following the Einstein model will be called monoatomic. Einstein crystal. So, in those crystals we assume that the atoms in the crystal are in close proximity and they interact also with other molecules. So, they are in close proximity which is true because they are fixed in their lattice sites. So, the molecule interacts strongly with its nearest neighbor. So, you have those uh, molecules, atoms, whatever you can say. So, if this is the lattice site so, all this will have strongly interaction with the neighboring atoms, okay. that is what it says. 
and lesser extent with molecules that are increasingly further away. So, you have maybe some molecule here, here. So, obviously, its interaction will be lower as compared to those which are nearby its sphere. That is what it says. So, if I want to draw a energy landscape, what are the different energy contribution in the vicinity of the central atom? So, those are a sum of these interactions first is the lowest energy state of each atom. So, we have to find out what is the lowest energy of each atom. So, we call this u0, uh, the energy at a lowest state. We have done that in the vibrational, uh, the 0, n equal to 0, that is the lowest energy state. Then we, each atom thus, because it vibrates about its lattice point, because it vibrates across this lattice point. So, this is suppose R0, some intermediate distance from the neighboring atom. So, it will vibrate around the equilibrium point. Because of the vibration according to equilibrium point, there will be a vibrational energy and correspondingly there will be a vibrational function. So, these two energies can be decoupled and then put forward in this Einstein model of crystal. So, now we will see what does that mathematical equation resemble. So, coming back, we start with Einstein model. So, you have one atom in the crystal. This is assumption, this is not actual. So, Einstein what he did, he assumed these particular uh, features to deduce the vibrational partition function and the overall partition function. So, assume, let us say you assume a central atom in the crystal. You consider the other atoms to be fixed, which is not correct actually, other atoms will be also be vibrating on its equilibrium position, but we consider it to be fixed at their equilibrium lattice side this is the first important assumption Einstein took. And then the interaction energy, so what are the way it interacts with the neighboring atoms, which says it is spherically symmetric. So, you must uh, now understand what do you mean by spherically symmetric, it is same everywhere if you draw a sphere. So, obviously, it is true the third assumption if two atoms are very close to each other, the interaction potential which is a function of r will shoot up. That is what it says, it will be very large if an atom gets close to another atom. Fourth, now this is very important assumption, not assumption, it is actually the outcome of this model that is motion of an atom in a solid crystal is not the free translation like gases. In gases, molecules are moving in free translation and across x, y and z direction, you know, this we can move across y direction, z direction, x direction. No, for this it is not like that, but it is only due to the motion of the atoms due to vibration in a crystal. So, it is only due to the crystalline nature, that is the motion of these atoms, small vibration, these are the vibrational contribution to the crystal. So, obviously, if it is vibrating, so it will be vibrating in all three axes x, y and z, that is what it says that there will be three translational motion of an atom in a gas, which we all know will be replaced by a three vibrational motion of the atom in a crystal. Each of these vibrational motion of an atom in a crystal, whether it is in x, y or z direction as we know can be modeled as a harmonic oscillator, because harmonic oscillator has been used for deducing the vibrational partition function. In similar analogy, we will again proceed with the same approach. Okay. Now, let us see mathematically. So, now if we say that uh, there are vibrations, suppose this is the atom, it vibrates across this direction, this direction, this direction. Einstein assume that all the frequency are same and this is equal to a single frequency that is V e, that is V e. So, it is vibrating at Einstein frequency of V e, nu e and also nu e in all three direction. And what is that frequency written as? The frequency as you know from the definition, this frequency and the energy at the nth level or nth state can be written as, as before n plus half by h nu e. So, n is a quantum number, it is a number of particular state. So, 
if it is 0 it is a ground state if it is 0 it is a ground state it means it represents the energy due to the bonded terms only ground state term likewise 1 2 3 this signifies the different energy levels and now this is this V e this frequency with which it vibrates. So, this is the expression nothing new about it we have derived it earlier this is the expression we also use for vibrational partition function assuming a harmonic oscillator here also we have the same expression. So, obviously uh, we know the frequency how it is related to the mass or reduced mass is 1 by 2 pi square root of you have the force constant which is a units of force per unit meter divided by mass. So, f is the force constant. So, if you assume it to be behaving like a spring, so it will have a force constant. So, this you can find out if you have the energy landscape, you have the energy landscape that is that you have the interatomic potential, you do a double differential of that interatomic potential, you will get the force constant. So, it will be d to u, d to u which is again a function of obviously interatomic distances by dr square. Okay. So, now we are in a position to write the partition function. What is the partition function? It is q assuming it to be a canonical ensemble because your volume crystal volume is not changing, number of molecules also not changing or atoms not changing, temperature is also fixed constant. So, we can assume it ever as a canonical ensemble. So, that is we will use the same expression for the canonical ensemble. So, this will be I here is states of that system states. So, you have this e to the power of minus e i and this energy of that state is a function of both n and v and it will be by k. This is the expression. Again this is nothing new the same expression I am writing, but here the number of states is different. Here this energy state will have two contribution. It will have a two contribution. The first contribution is this sum of the interaction energies. So, when an atom interact with the neighboring atoms, what is the sum of the interaction energy of each atom which are at its lattice sites. So, it means if you have this atom here and these are the neighboring atoms here. So, what is this interaction? How does this central atom interacts with other atoms when these other atoms are at rest? That will be constant that will be a constant value because the interatomic potential or interatomic distance are not changing. What will change? The changing will be the vibrational. So, if I can draw it in a three dimensional nature, so this suppose this is the one and this is the other. So, you have let us say this is a central atom and these are the neighboring atoms. So, vibration is it can vibrate across this direction, it can vibrate across this direction it can also vibrate across this direction. So, it is vibrates in these directions to be equal to the Einstein frequency. So, there will be vibrational motions energies associated with this vibration. So, you have two interaction energies one is the fixed one which is due to the nearby atoms which are fixed at its lattice sites and the vibrational motion due to the vibrational nature of the atom considered. So, let us find out mathematically what are these vibrational partition function in the case of the central atom. So, in due course of time we will be defining the Einstein model and we will also get the Einstein vibrational temperature. Let us see. So, let us do that. How do we do that? So, as I wrote you in the previous slide, so Q of n v t the partition function is nothing but all the states i e to the power of e i n v upon k t. So, as I told you this uh, e i is the sum total of plus vibrational energy. Okay. So, what I will do is I will just separate out these two here in place of e i. So, if you separate out these two terms you will get uh, so, you have a two summation exponential to the power of Boltzmann terms. So, first will be on internal energy. So, that will be equal to since it is a constant there will be no other states your single state. 
so there will be no summation so you will simply have a constant term e to the power of minus e okay because there is the total energy term will be the same okay that is not varying with the motion of the atoms so that is constant due to internal energy then you will have a summation term what is the summation term the summation term will be the states corresponding to the vibrational states of each atom okay now here is now coming to the vibrational states this will be e to the power of minus en by kt now we are talking about n number of atoms it is to the power of n this is the expression so we work with the second part of the expression so what you have is finally so i will have is e to the power of minus e i n t by k t and what is this this is nothing but q vibrational isn't it it will be q vibrational because it is vibrational so it will be okay this should be 3n because you have three axes x y and z so n number of atoms you will have vibrational states across all the three axes that's why it will be 3n so it will be q vibrational to the power of 3n so now this expression for q vibrational is known what is that we have already found out earlier so this will be then q vibrational equal to summation n 0 to infinity e to the power of me this is the expression for vibrational partition function so that is now i will replace this en with the energy term in the case of harmonic oscillator that is nothing but e to the power of what was that equation n plus half into h v e by k t okay n plus half into h v e was the energy term k t was already there in the denominator so n plus half instead of this frequency i have written here einstein frequency that is it so now the entire problem comes summation of this term now this summation of this system i can again break them into first i can make them a sum of two terms two summation you have n into h nu e by kt plus half into h nu e by kt so if i write those two terms the first term is a constant i can do it h nu e by 2 kt so when minus half this is all your constants only n will vary so again the n will be inside the bracket so n goes from 0 to infinity e to the power of v e by k t okay because this is constant now we know what is that einstein temperature we define the einstein vibrational temperature theta e let's define in the similar term like vibrational temperature okay and now i replaced everything by this einstein temperature this is very important inclusion einstein temperature so i can get the final value the summation of this you know very well we did it in the previous class so i'll just write this this per term i will replace by theta e so what you have is this entire term is nothing summation is equal to a 1 minus it's an exponential series so oh i'm sorry we have a minus sign here yeah minus of theta e by t this is the exponential term and this term will be as it is minus by 2t so the overall term is by so this is your q vibrational 
important conclusion you should remember this expression ok so this is what so now this as i told you e interaction this interaction as i already told you this one is n into u means number of molecules is n multiply each molecule with u and what is this u u is the interaction energy for each molecule per atom at its equilibrium that is sides this is a constant so remember it does not make any difference with the vibrational temperature it is only a constant okay so now let us find out what is the zero point energy per atom for a monoatomic einstein crystal so in this case i can write down the q here we have got the expression for q uh, q is here q is e to the power of n mu by kt e to the power of minus then the vibrational part because n into mu by kt is the interaction energy term which is constant then comes the vibrational term that is the vibrational frequency term now to the power of 3n this is term what you do is find out a what are the zero point we will come to that zero point energy per atom so a helmholtz free function which is a function of nvt this q is also a function of nvt so this is nothing but minus kt ln q again the same expression will be used so find out ln q from here so if you see ln q will be equal to n mu by kt okay n mu by kt then minus so this is i take ln here and then plus ln of e to the power of minus theta e by 2t so it is multiplied by 3n let it be 3n be like this for the time being and then uh, you have a uh, sense it's multiply with this term when i take this term so it will be a minus then uh, you will be having ln of 1 minus e to the power of don't know if i i suppose i did okay there will be a kt term also here so you have a kt term here so actually what you do this is the term so when you multiply with minus kt minus kt okay so uh, because it is e to the power of minus n mu by kt just correct it it is minus n mu by kt okay when you do that this minus n u by kt this minus n u by kt and this minus kt cancels out you have this n u only here so you n u here and uh, because 3n can be kept here so this becomes 3n into minus theta e by 2 t so this is nothing but uh, when you do this correctly you will get this expression i am just leaving it for you to find out this will be n u plus 3 n by 2 h v e so theta e again i am writing as h v e by k from there i've written this and then you will be having the same expression 3 n k t as before into ln this term one by it is nothing but i'm taking this ln term uh, this again it will be 3 n just check this expression from here to here this is for you to find out finally you will reach this expression if you reach this expression you will then find out that i can write this as if i take n common here i will find your n I am just writing what is u e 0 then you may comprehend. So, n v t we have got this expression where u e 0 I can write down as equals to u plus 3 by 2 h nu e ok. This is what you called as the this expression. So, this 
this particular u e 0 has subsumed both this term, this one term and this term. So, you take n common here. So, u plus 3 h nu by 2, this is what is called the 0 point energy per atom, 0 point energy per atom of a crystal. So, this is very simple, I am doing nothing but just writing out the because the results here. So, A is done. Now, let us move to other thermodynamic properties, chemical potential and internal energy. So, this is pretty simple here, chemical potential is a function of NVT. So, it will be dou A by dou N common with V and T. So, this is nothing but A by N which is equal to U minus 3 K T ln of E to the power of minus theta E by 2 T minus theta E by T this expression this is your chemical potential. Again I can make some simplification. So, it will be u plus 3 by 2 h v e plus 3 k t one minus e to the power of minus theta i. So, Okay. So, what I have done is, I have taken the derivative of the Helmholtz free function expression A with respect to n, I am getting this expression. Okay. So, if this is the expression, so you will have uh, the value as equal to, I can again club this value as u e 0, I can club these two as u e 0 plus 3 k t ln of 1 minus e to the power of minus theta e by Okay. Now, we go for the internal energy U. Now, U, U is very straightforward. Again, you use the same expression which we obtained earlier for internal energy. It is k t square dou L n q by dou t, keeping n and v constant. Again, this L and Q value you have already, you do the derivative correctly, you will get this relation N U plus 3 N by 2 H V E plus 3 N K T, then you will have theta E by T by E to the power of theta E by T minus 1. Okay. Again, I club them together and get this expression u capital E 0 plus 3 n h mu e to the power of minus theta e by t 1 minus e to the power of minus theta e by t. Okay, This is the expression, final expression for internal energy. Likewise, let us explore the other properties, but before we explore the other properties, let us see what happens at uh, two different instances. Okay. So, let us see first. So, uh, we have got these expressions. So, A is equal to n u e 0 plus 3 n k t ln of we got a like this we also got u like this u equal to n u e 0 plus 3 n h nu by 1 minus e to the power of Okay, we got these two expression. 
Now what is the values at t equal to 0? So if you see carefully the relation the t equal to 0 q vibrational q vibrational energy there will be only n plus half will be equal to 1 in that case. So in that case when t approaches 0 q vibrational will be approaching towards if you carefully monitor the equation it will approach toward e to the power of theta e by t okay because we know that q vibrational here is so here we have taken the t equals to 0 so whatever the energy state will be the lowest ground energy state and if you look up the vibrational partition function carefully this will closely approach towards e to the power of minus theta e by t. So in the partition function if you replace this term with this term at t equal to 0 you will see we will be having this a equals a when n v and t approaching 0 will be nothing but if you see from this expression this will be nothing but n u it will be simply be equal to n u plus 3 n h v e by 2. So, it will approach towards this n e 0 which is clear because from equation a if you see if you just put t approaching 0 this entire term actually disappears. So, what you have is n into u e 0. So, u e 0 is equal to u plus this h v e by 2. So, that is all we have written. So, it approaching to the constant value that is the internal energy. So, at t equals to 0 total energy will be whatever interaction energy due to the internal energy modes that is the nearby atom that is what it said the Helmholtz free function. And what will be the this internal energy when this t approaches 0? It will be again be simply be equal to n u e 0. same. So, both the internal energy and the Helmholtz watch function will converge towards its internal energy of the crystalline matter that is the crystal atom. So, there will be no interaction potential potential or means at t equal to 0 physically speaking there will be no vibrational energy term or the expression. Whatever expression of internal energy and work or the Helmholtz free function will be due to the internal energy. Okay. Now you can also find out the entropy. What is entropy? Entropy you can find out now you have u minus a by t. This way you can find out. So this will be nothing but 3 n k theta e by t into e to the power of minus theta e by t by 1 minus e to the power of minus theta e by t minus ln of 1 minus e to the power of minus theta e by t this will be the entire expression if you do the mathematics correctly ok. So now again if this approaches 0 a t approaches 0 so if s n v t approaching to 0 it means you will be having uh, this s also equals to 0. Why is this so? Because th this particular limit if you see this particular limit well here if you approach t approaches 0 means e to the power of 0 is 1 1 minus 1 0 so this becomes 0. But in this case if you apply limits if you assume that theta e by t is x so it means you can uh, you know this particular uh, expression when limit x approaches infinity e i x by x to the power of is equal to same as limit x approaches infinity e to the power of minus x by x square. So here x if you want x as equal to theta e by t then you can see this all this is approaching towards 0. 
by mathematical definition this approach is 0. So, you see there is a theta e by 2 here x is there and this is e to the power of minus x is there. Okay. So, if you take this down if you multiply both sides numerator and denominator by theta e by t take it down. So, this entire term will go to 0. So, overall this term is 0, this is 0 everything goes to 0. So, that is what it says that it will lead to the third law of thermodynamics, third law of okay. this is the third law of thermodynamics that at t equal to 0 the entropy of a perfectly crystalline material is equal to 0. So, this is what then uh, what is Cv? How can you get Cv? Cv? Cv is also equal to dou u by dou t and v equal to 3 nk theta e by t whole square into e to the power of minus theta e by t by 1 minus e to the power of minus theta e by t whole square. Okay. So, I did the mathematics from u and I got this expression. Again, if I apply the limit where t equals to 0, so C v n v t approaching 0, it will be equal to simply 3 and k simply equal to 3 and k because the issue is um, this, this term will be replaced by only e to the power of minus theta e. This entire term expression is due to the vibrational partition function. So, you will be having after the do the mathematics applying limit t equal to 0, you will give, get simply equal to e to the power of minus theta e by t. So, at that t approaching 0, you will get this expression. 3 n k theta e by t whole square into e to the power of minus theta e by t. So, let us see the other extreme that is we have seen all this when t approaches 0. In when we say t approaches 0, we are always meaning that this q vibrational will approach e to the power of minus theta e by t. With this assumption only I have derived here u a mu and s along with cv okay we have derived expression for all these terms based on when q vibrational equals to e to the power of minus theta e by t it is only true when t approaching 0 but if t approaches infinity what will be this expression look like when t approaches infinity let us see so then in that case we will retain the same expression so q vibrational will be equal to e to the power of minus theta e by 2t by 1 minus e to the power of minus theta e by t. So, you can break them and expand them in series term. It will be 1 minus theta e by 2t plus, so there will be a term here and then there will be term as 1 minus 1 minus theta e by t plus this term. So, if you see uh, this term if you open you will have only theta e by t left and the these terms will be equivalent you can neglect the higher order terms. So, a good approximation is simply equal to 1 upon theta e by t this term is equal to t upon theta e. So, q vibrational becomes t upon theta e. So, one was this. So, as so we can write down q vibrational is equal to t by theta e when t approaches infinity while q vibrational is approaching towards e to the power of minus theta e by t when t approaches 0 these two things we have to remember. Okay?
if you remember it then what we can see is then the value of q will also change then I will write down the partition function in this case because we have been writing the expressions how what will look like if t is very very higher than theta e. So, in this case your partition function will change it will be n u by k t into k t of h v e to the power of 3 n ok. So, q vibrational is equal to t by theta e. So, t by theta e to the power of 3 n I have written that is it ok. This is t by theta e to the power of 3 n that is it I have written. Now, you can take ln q ln q you can write down ln q will be equal to minus n mu by k t plus 3 n ln of k t h v e. So, now we can do some again replace back the this is not mu is always u right. So, do not confuse between these two this is u internal energy plus ok this expression. Now, you can use a what is a a is equal to minus k t l n q which is equal to l n q is already there multiply by minus k t minus k t goes away you have n u here minus k t again multiplied by this it will be minus 3 n k t then the term as it is ln. So, this will be your Helmholtz free function ok this is one. So, let us see the other expressions for internal energy entropy and this specific heat. So, in this case your specific heat for u will be mu is chemical potential when T is greater than the Einstein temperature this will be equal to simply A by n is equal to u minus 3 k T into L n of T by theta e. This is straightforward we got A from the previous slide divide by n this is the expression for potential. Now, internal energy again internal energy when T is greater than the Einstein temperature it will be the entire expression L n q you already got you do it a derivative which is the temperature multiplied by k t square. If you do that correctly you will get n u plus 3 n k t ok the expression. And now the most important that is s what will be the value of s n v when t greater than theta e when t is greater than theta e you will be getting 3 n k 1 minus ln of t by theta e. So, this is what you call the law of Dulong and Petit ok the entropy which is actually it follows this law of Dulong and um, Petit follows because of the entropy you can also calculate C v. What is this C v again? C v if you take this you will get simply equal to 3 n k 3 into n k. This 3 n k is actually directly it is called as the law of Dulong and Petit. So, if you remember correctly for the ideal monoatomic gas we got it as 3 by 2 n k, but in the case of crystal at high temperature we are getting 3 n k. It means in a gas each atom of an ideal gas has 3 degrees of translational motion because of translational motion it is able to contribute half n k half k in each direction. So, half k plus half k plus half k for each atom. So, it that it becomes 3 by 2 k and you multiply by number of molecules with 3 by 2 n k. But in the case of an atom which is this in the monoatomic crystal it has 3 degrees of vibrational motion only not translational motion fully excited. So, it means it will contribute k contribution in each side. So, it is k plus k plus k it is 3 k 
multiply by n number of atom it will be 3 n k ok. This 3 n k is only due to the highly excited state or the high temperature contribution. This is what you call as the law of Dulong and Petit. Thank you.